a pleasure to be with you. I was here five years ago, and as I look, I can, I can vaguely recall many of your faces. You look older, definitely, but you still look good. Now, some of you have a little more gray in your hair. Some of you have changed hair color all completely. But we've changed. Five years ago, my wife, Nitsa was pregnant, and now we have our beautiful four-year-old girl with us, Jordan. Five years ago, I was working in Michigan Conference. We've moved to Central California and now currently in Washington Conference, where my wife serves as children's ministry director and I uh, as youth director. There was a story that's told of an of a old man in the eastern side of the globe, the far east. And there was this little boy that lived in a village, and, and that little boy had no friends because he was the only boy in that entire village. His dad and his mom, they worked alongside with other villagers there in the fields. And one day as that kid is playing on the dirt, whatever he's doing, he sees his dad coming, and his dad is has something over his back, and he's just carrying it, carrying it, carrying it, and the boy has no idea what it is that his dad has. And as he sees that his dad is finally entering their little, that, 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 the little makeshift house, all of a sudden he sees, he can't wait to see what it is, but dad has to leave first. His dad finally puts it inside the house, and after a few minutes, the dad goes back out into the field to do his work. And the little kid sees his opportunity. As the dad is distracted, he starts racing over into the house to see what it is that dad had brought in. He looked at the house. Everything seemed normal. Everything was in place. And all of a sudden, he is shocked because he sees another child. Uh, he doesn't see many children at all, but he sees this little boy in front of him, and the boy starts saying, Hi! And the response is, hi, my name is, let's just give him his name, Daniel. My name is Daniel. The boy says, my name is Daniel. You want to come out and play? You want to come out and play? Let's go. Let's go. And the boy rushes out outside, and he starts waiting for his new friend. And he waits, and he waits. And he waits. The boy never came out. I don't know. Maybe he went to the outhouse out there, had to go. He starts waiting more. He waits about 10 more minutes. And the boy, you know, 10 minutes, that's an eternity for a little boy. And now he's getting mad. Like, what happened? He goes, decides, I'm going back into the house. What happened to that kid? He goes into the house. And he sees, and he, I mean, he gets very frustrated because he sees that the boy is in the exact same place that he left him. What's the matter with you? I thought you were coming out. What's the matter with you? I thought you were coming out. Oh, you're just playing with me now. Oh, you're just playing with me. Stop it. Stop it. I mean it. I mean it. I'm going to punch you. I'm going to punch you. And the boy gets his fist out. I'm serious. I'm serious. And he swings at the boy. And as he hits the boy's face, the boy cries out in pain. Ah! He looks at his hand, and he sees blood all over. The boy struck a mirror. The boy had never seen a mirror in his life. He had never known what he looked like. He had never seen his own features. And as a result of not knowing who he was, what he looked like, it caused him a lot of pain. If you have your Bibles and your phones, if we turn to Matthew chapter 4. 
Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to see that Jesus also has an experience where it can go very wrong when we do not know who we are. When we are not sure of our identity, things can get very nasty for us. Let's bow our heads. Father, as we open and take a look at your word for a few moments, we ask your spirit to once again come afresh upon us, enlighten us, move us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Matthew chapter 4, starting with verse 1. Then Jesus, the Bible says, was led by who? The Spirit. Do you want to be led by the Spirit this morning? Do you really want to be led by God? Now tell me, would you want to be led in this way? Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit to the wilderness to be what? Tempted by the devil. Do you want to be led by the Spirit in this way? Ooh, that's a lot harder to say amen to, right? So as Jesus is now led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, to that desert, for the purpose. Remember when Jesus, in his prayer, and lead us not into temptation. Here the Spirit is leading him to temptation. Verse 2, after he had fasted, after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the obvious is mentioned. Jesus was hungry. Some of you are already hungry and you had breakfast. Some of you are hoping that this is a short sermon because you're hungry. And when you are hungry and you don't satisfy that anger, uh, sorry, I already messed it up. You don't satisfy your hunger you become hangry, hungry and angry. And anything, somebody crosses you, somebody says something in a tone that they had nothing bad, you, you all of a sudden take it wrong and you lash out at them, you, your kids are doing something and you yell at them, and it's very easy to get frustrated. We, we say words and things that we know that we shouldn't say, we regret, all these different things because we are hungry. Forty days and forty nights go by. Verse 3, then the tempter approached him and said the following, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, aside from, we, we know the story here that it is the devil. When you read The Desire of Ages, the author there presents a picture, a portrait, and detail of what was going on behind these scenes. And Ellen White writes that the devil did not show up as the devil, all dressed in black, looking all dark, spooky. He comes as an angel of light to Jesus. Jesus, I've come from heaven. Your Father has seen your commitment to walk this path to accept this mission of saving the world and, of course, going through this suffering. And your dad has now declared and that I have come to you and say, you don't have to suffer any longer. 
God has accepted this sacrifice. God has accepted your mission. God has accepted the heart and the motivation, your commitment to him and to saving humanity. And Jesus isn't really buying it. And so he says, come on, you don't have to keep doing this, let's go. Doesn't seem to work, Jesus is just silent. You know what? You look like in pretty bad shape. Forty days, forty nights, I have no idea what that would do to the body. How disfigured from the usual appearance you and I would be. Now we have our homes, our beds to rest. Jesus didn't even have that. He's sleeping out in the desert, in the sweltering heat. And this disguised angel tells Jesus, you know what? There was an angel that fell from heaven. And from the way, from the looks of you, I think you may be that fallen angel that deceives the world. But, 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 but let, let, let's settle it here. Just to prove that, uh, that who I've been sent to is the right person. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. How many of you like a challenge? How many of you like it when someone says, I don't believe you. I don't think you can do it. I don't think you're capable of it. You want to prove them wrong, don't you? Oh, yeah? I, I, I'll show you I can do it. Talking to me that way that I can't do this or I can't do that. I'm going to show you that I can do it, and I'm going to put you down, and I'm going to put you in your place so that you never doubt me again. If you are the Son of God, tell these stones. To become bread. Forty days, forty nights, you're hungry. What would have been wrong with Jesus eating some food? Would Jesus be violating any of the commandments? No one is around where somebody can say Jesus is using his power for his own benefit, to glorify himself. If you had the power when you are hungry to automatically make food, would you do it? If you had the power to transport yourself we drove about an hour to be here. I would have loved to just, you know, wake up and decide at the house there in South Austin to, all right, 10.45, show up here immediately. If I had that power, would there be anything wrong with it? Not necessarily. What would have been wrong with Jesus taking some stones after 40 days and 40 nights, turn them into bread, take a bite, take a more bite, finish it, and continue walking? Would that have made his commitment to God any less? So what was the problem? 
Jesus, of course, answered in verse 4, man must not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. But what I declare and submit to you is not that it was Satan that was suggesting it that would made it automatically bad, but it was the the, the theme and the issue was the identity of who he was. Did he trust in who God said he was? And what God had already declared, let's go to chapter 3 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 3, starting with verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to stop him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me? Jesus answered him, saying, allow it now, because it is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him to be baptized. Verse 16, after Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. And the heavens suddenly opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, I take delight in him. What did, what did that voice say? And now, that angel says, if, if, if you are, if you are the Son of God, that was the issue. Your identity, Jesus. And Jesus recognized it. And he said, this, this angel can't be from my father because if he was from my father, he wouldn't be asking me this question, if I am God's son. I know I am God's son because I heard him talk to me. I heard him say it to everybody, and I have declared and I accept that what God says about me is true more than what I feel, more than my condition right now. No matter how I, uh, I may look, no matter how skinny, weak, feeble, and hungry that I may be, my father said, I am his son, and no matter what my condition is, I will always be his son. I have a million dollars here. You want a million dollars? Not you. Not you. What's your name? Thank God. You like it? I thought you'd be more excited for a million dollars. Somebody else want a million dollars? You want a million dollars? You say you want a million dollars, but you think it's fake. Is it fake? It's fake. Okay, I'll keep it then. A million dollars, all right. Maybe you guys will believe me if I have a hundred dollars. I have another child here. A hundred dollars. What? They said a million dollars was fake. You don't seem to think this is fake. Oh, now you're looking at it. <laughs> you think that's fake? No, you, you, why, why? Why is it not fake? You know there is counterfeit money that looks very real to money. It's real. You want to think... Real or fake? Ben Franklin is on the $100 bill. Who's that? It's Ben Franklin. 
But like I said, counterfeit money, it's not going to be, it's not going to be Andrew Jackson, right? Real or fake? Real. You know, you guys are the only people that have really said that it's real. If you rip it, you'll know. The watermark is 3D. You think counterfeit money is not 3D? You can't do it. All right. Now, it is real. All of you guys had money and none of you seemed to want it. You gave it back to me very quite easy. I was asking for it. Does anybody know how much this is worth? So a hundred dollars. The material is not worth a hundred dollars. How much is the material worth? Fourteen point two cents, I believe. But none of you consider this to be fourteen point two cents. What is what do you consider this to be? A hundred dollars. All right. Can I lessen the value of this? If I were to do a federal felony here and cross out these 100 marks and I put 20, have I made this a $20 bill? Would you want this $100 bill? You don't want this $100 bill? Okay. He thinks it's fake, I guess. You want $100, buddy? You want $100? No? No one wants $100? Okay, you got a few, few smart people in the back. What am I doing to it? Crumbling it up. Do you still want these $100 bill? Stepping on it. Probably have like some E. coli and who knows what other germs I'm putting on it. Who wants it now? Still $100? All right. Now I'm going to get you. Who wants this $100? You seriously still want this $100 bill? Why? It's $100, but I spit on it. I made it dirty. I put bacterias on all these different things. <laughs> Money laundering, it could be good. No matter what I try doing to this, aside from burning it up and everything, you still want it. And you say, because it's still a hundred. No matter its condition, no matter what I've done to it, no matter what history it's gone through, I don't know who has had this money. I don't know the story behind this. All I know is that it still has uh, some, all these identifying marks that can make it to be considered a hundred dollars. You still want it. It retains its value. Because of its identity. Who gives it its identity? Because I can say, I, I really, I can say, like, I got $20 here. Do you want $20? You don't want $20. You don't want $20. You'll take the 100 But I'm giving you $20. You'll take it because you recognize it's 100 No matter what name I give this, you always consider it $100. The identity of this bill does not change based on what I declare of it. Who decided that this was $100? The federal government, why do they get to decide? They printed it, right? They originated it. 
Now I want you to think about your life. Do you feel like this crumbled up $100 bill sometimes? You didn't do anything, but people have messed up your life. Kids, you're just trying to be happy at school, and you're being picked on, teased, humiliated. You go to work. No one likes you. You feel all shriveled up. People have tossed you. People have trampled on you. People have hurt you. You've cried. You, you've cried out to God, Lord, change these things in my life. I can't go on. I feel worthless. I feel hopeless. Friends, who made you? God, no matter the condition of your life right now, your value has not changed. Who you are has not changed, and that is why it is so important to know your identity in Jesus, because if you don't know your identity in Jesus, then other people are going to declare who you are. And most of the time it's going to say, you're not as good as me. They're going to try to bring you down if you feel that you're high or they see you at a higher status. They're going to try throwing rocks at you to take you down. But if you remember who you are in Jesus, no matter what they've done, no matter what they're going to do, no matter what they are currently doing, you are still God's child. You are still the son and daughter of God. He loves you preciously. He loves you with an everlasting love. He is there taking care of you. He works the night shift with you. Whatever your job occupation is God looks up to you with infinite value because you are made in the image and likeness of God. Look at the people beside you right now. I want you to think, how many of you would like to see God's face right now? I know I would. Now, I'm not preaching heresy here, because I know this is being recorded and streamed. Wouldn't it be nice to see the face of God, what he looks like? And I asked you to look around. I'm not saying that each of us are God here, but if we are made in his likeness and in his image, the person beside you, on the other side, behind you, in front of you. That's what God looks like. And the way we treat each other, the way we talk about each other, the way we consider each other. Do we treat each other with the value that God has given to each one of us? Do we treat each other as the image and likeness of God. Let's turn to Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter five. Verse sixteen. Verse sixteen and seven. Second Thessalonians chapter five verses sixteen and seven. Second Corinthians chapter five. Sorry. I was thinking of another. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 16 and 17. From now on then, the Apostle Paul writes, we do not know anyone in a purely human way. We do not know anyone in a purely human way, says Paul. Even if we have known Christ in a purely human way, Yet now, we no longer know him like that. And verse 17, the one that many of us have heard many times, many of us know by memory. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? 
he or she is a new creation. All things have gone. All things have passed away. Behold, here is the new. Unless, how many of you always feel like a new creation? Yeah, I agree with you. I wouldn't be raising my hand. I wouldn't be saying amen to that. This is what I feel many times like. But I have his word of what God has declared about me. God no longer, no, 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 not only looks at my current condition, my Savior, my God is looking at me at what I can become. And that's how he sees me at that moment. Even though I am crumbled, even though I am spit on, even though I am uh, tossed aside, I am abandoned by other people, God has not taken away his declaration about me that I am his child, that I am his son, that he cares, that he loves me, that he bestows grace upon me every single day of my life. And even though I may not currently feel like a new creation, I have his word that I can trust and say, even though I don't feel like a new creation, I I can make the choice to accept that I am a new creation. And based upon that choice, I now can make choices of how I live. And the choices I make no longer to react or respond like this. But I can respond as a new creation. As a new creation, a child of God. That's who I am. And the question for each one of us this morning, who are you? Who are you? And I hope it's not your status. It's not your title. It's not your family background. Yes, those are part of your story. But ultimately, who are you if all that is taken away? And that can make the difference. Like that boy, because he did not know who he was, he got hurt. Jesus knew who he was. And therefore, even hungry after 40 days and 40 nights, because he knew who he was based on what his father said about him, not how he looked, not how he felt, not how hungry he was. He could respond to the tempter. He could respond to that deceiver and says, I know who you are. You are not from my father because my father says that I am his son. Even though I don't look like a divine being at this moment, even though I don't feel divine at this, even though I am weak, I am hungry, I am thirsty, I, I, I really would like to turn that, those stones into bread. I don't have to prove anything to you. I know who I am. I am the son of my father. It's who I am. Now some of you may be struggling with faith. Yeah, you believe in God. Yes, you pray to him. But you're kind of getting worn out by the routine. You're not sure even if the Seventh-day Adventist church is ultimately going to be on the right side of history. You want to be on the right side of history. But sometimes you're not sure if this is the right place. Knowing who you are in Jesus will keep you on track. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. 
And see, that's the many times the problem. We're leaning on our understanding. We're leaning on the worldview that we have gathered from our schooling, from our peers, and all these different things. And we're trying to be on the right side of history based on that worldview. And many times they are filled with good intentions and great motives. And we fill our lives with many good things. We fill our lives of our children with so many good things, but oftentimes at the expense of the better. Who am I? I am God's son. I am a Seventh-day Adventist, not because of what necessarily I have chosen, but because of what I've seen God declaring. My final verse, and I'll close. Philippians 1.6. This bill started off clean. Had a few creases because it was folded, but it was clean. Right, Pastor? That's why I gave you 520s, because I don't think you would have appreciated a spit-on $100 bill. You would have accepted it, but you'll take both. Yeah, I'm sure you would. I am sure of this, says Paul, Philippians 1, 6. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. I mean, I guess I could iron this out, but I've put a history on this. Not nice looking, but it's still a hundred dollars. You'll take it, you'll use it. Jesus is willing to use you in your current condition because He knows your condition is not your conclusion. He will finish the work that He started. And the beautiful thing about Jesus is this crumpled up bill will look shiny new. You will come out good. Keep the faith. Keep the faith, church. Keep the faith, Stonehill. Trust in God. Believe in God. Trust what he says about you, about you as a church community, about you as a church family. And though you may not feel like it, you are a new creation. Because what God has declared is more powerful than what you currently feel. Thank you. Indeed, we look forward to the day when Faith becomes sight. We're hurting, Father, in so many different ways. But we want to declare to you without apology that we will hold on by faith to what you declare about us. And we will say, this is who I am, and this is where I stand. Lord, if anyone listening to my voice at this moment wants to accept that they are beaten down, but they want to declare that they are who you say that you declare them to be, may they raise their hand at this moment. They may declare, I am a daughter of God. I am a son of God. I am God's child. No matter what other people have declared or are trying to do to lower me and put me down, I by faith accept that I am your child. And we look forward to the day when Jesus returns that no longer will it be by faith that we declare we are God's child. We see, we will experience, and we will behold Jesus our Savior who says to us, well done, good and faithful child. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And for that reason, as we close, we say, it is well with my soul. Who you say I am, it is well. It is well.
In Jesus' name, amen.